Welcome to Lexterio Podcast. Here we break down complex medical concepts into clear and concise discussions that reinforce your understanding. Today, we're diving into something every single person has experienced, but few truly understand. Pain. Absolutely. And it's so much more than just a simple sensation. The official IASP definition calls it an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience. That emotional component is key. It really is. Pain isn't just a signal, it's an entire experience. And to understand it, we need some key terms. Let's quickly define them. First, nociception. Right. Nociception is just the neurologic process, the detection of a noxious or potentially damaging stimulus. It's the raw data before your brain interprets it as, ouch. Exactly. And that leads to two critical concepts patients will describe, hyperalgesia and allodynia. Ah, yes. Hyperalgesia is an exaggerated response. A pinprick feels like a dagger. But allodynia is, well, it's just bizarre. That's when something that shouldn't hurt, like a bedsheet brushing against your skin, causes real pain. And that distinction helps us classify pain. The first big split is physiologic versus pathologic pain, or as we usually call it, acute versus chronic. Acute pain is useful. It's your body's alarm system. Touch a hot stove, you pull away. Your vitals might even jump. It serves a protective purpose. But chronic pain, that's different. It's pathologic. The alarm bell is stuck ringing long after the danger is gone. It serves no useful purpose. In fact, it just inhibits function. And that's where the other classification comes in, nociceptive versus neuropathic. Nociceptive is the straightforward one. You have tissue damage, maybe an ache in a muscle, and it gets worse when you move. It's a direct response to a harmful stimulus. Neuropathic pain is nerve pain. It's damage or dysfunction of the nerves themselves. This is your radiating shooting pain, often completely independent of movement. And it's a huge driver of chronic pain states. So how does a signal get from, say, a stubbed toe all the way to the brain to be perceived as pain? There's a four-step journey. I love this part. It's transduction, transmission, modulation, and perception. Okay, step one, transduction. You stub your toe. What happens at the tissue level? The injured tissue releases what I call an inflammatory soup. Globulin, histamine, substance P, CGRP. All these chemicals are released and they activate the nociceptors, the pain receptors. That's transduction, converting the physical event into an electrical signal. Got it. So the signal is created. Step two is transmission. This is just getting that signal from the toe to the spinal cord, right? Exactly. The action potential zips along the sensory nerve fibers up to the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. It's like sending an urgent telegram. Now for the really interesting part, modulation. The signal has reached the spinal cord, but it's not a straight shot to the brain. The body can actually turn down the volume. Yes. This is the descending or inhibitory pathway. Your brain, specifically areas like the periaqueductal gray, releases its own painkillers, endogenous opioids like endorphins and enkephalins. So these natural opioids act on receptors in the spinal cord to inhibit the ascending pain signal. It's our built-in pain control system. But wait, I mean, if we have this amazing built-in system, why is chronic pain such a huge problem? It seems like this modulation should just handle it. That's a fantastic point. It's because in chronic pain states, this modulatory system can become dysfunctional or overwhelmed. The incoming pain signal is so persistent and strong that the descending inhibitory signals just can't keep up. The balance is lost. I see. So it's not that the system is gone, it's that it's failing to cope. That makes sense. Okay, so after modulation, or lack thereof, we get the final step. Perception. Right. The signal finally ascends to the brain, hitting the thalamus, and then spreading out. It goes to the somatosensory cortex so you know where it hurts but also to the amygdala for the emotional response, the hypothalamus for the stress response, it becomes a full conscious experience. Let's talk about the wires themselves. The afferent nerve fibers. There's a huge difference between them, isn't there? A massive difference. You have the big, fast, myelinated A-beta fibers that carry signals for light touch and pressure. Then you have the smaller, slower A-delta and the tiny, unmyelinated, super slow C fibers. Guess which ones carry most of the pain signals? The slow ones, of course. The A-delta for that initial, sharp pain. 
and the C fibers for that dull, throbbing, persistent ache. And this speed difference is the entire basis for one of the most elegant theories in pain medicine, the gate control theory. Oh, this is brilliant! The idea is that there's a gate in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord, and only so much information can get through at once. And the fast, myelinated A-beta fibers, the touch and pressure ones, get priority access. So if you send a touch signal at the same time as a pain signal... The touch signal closes the gate on the pain signal. It's why when you bump your elbow, you instinctively rub it. The rubbing sensation travels on the fast fibers and blocks the pain traveling on the slow fibers. It's something we do without even thinking. Scratching a mosquito bite, putting pressure on a cut, we are all unknowingly using the gate control theory. And it's the principle behind things like TENS units and massage therapy. It's just incredible. Let's touch on visceral pain quickly, because that's a different beast. Pain from an internal organ. It is. It's poorly localized, often described as deep and sickening. And it leads to the phenomenon of referred pain. This is explained by the convergence projection theory. Meaning the nerve fibers from an organ, say the heart, converge on the same spinal cord neurons as fibers from a somatic area, like the left arm. Exactly. And since the brain is much more used to getting signals from the arm, when that shared neuron fires, the brain interprets the signal as coming from the arm. That's why a heart attack can present as left arm pain. It's a case of mistaken identity at the neurologic level. So fascinating. And all of this can go wrong, leading to sensitization. Right. You can have peripheral sensitization, where the nerve endings at the site of injury become hyperexcitable. But then you can get central sensitization, where the central nervous system itself becomes rewired. The neurons in the spinal cord and brain get stuck in a hyperactive state? This is a key mechanism in conditions like fibromyalgia. So the problem is no longer in the tissues. It's in the processing system itself, which explains why treatment is so complex. Precisely. It requires a multimodal approach, addressing the biology, the psychology, and the social factors. So to recap, pain is a complex sensory and emotional experience. We have acute, useful pain, and chronic pathologic pain. The signal travels through transduction, transmission, modulation, and perception. And we can use concepts like the brilliant gate control theory to help manage it. An amazing journey from a simple stimulus to a complex, life-altering experience. Thanks for breaking that down. My pleasure. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you for tuning in to the Lecturio podcast, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you for tuning in. Keep exploring Lecturio's features to strengthen your knowledge and master key medical concepts. See you in the next episode.